Go. So even lower than it is. Okay. Lower? Oh. Pretzel. Oh. Good. good. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's actually yeah. awesome. Hi, I'm Michelle Brasso. I'm a physics and earth and space science teacher teaching grade 9s through 12. Did you know that the pendulum was the most accurate way of keeping time up until the 1930s? Not only are they used in metronomes, but they're also used in buildings to protect against the damages of earthquakes. In this session, we're going to explore what factors affect the period of a pendulum. In this simple experiment, students are going to determine what factors affect the period of a pendulum. The period of a pendulum is how long it takes to go all the way to and fro in one cycle. Students generally try different things, different materials, different masses, different lengths, different angles, but what they'll find is the only factor that affects the period of a pendulum when you pull it back by small amounts is just the length. The materials for this lab are super easy to acquire. So some string, some scissors, some tape, a protractor, some masses. I really like the slotted mass sets so you can change up the mass easily. But even objects with different masses are fine. About the same size would be nice. And then I like to use these magnetic hooks. They really are the workhorse of my classroom because I'll use them for pendulum painting, for just creating pendulums and for hanging stuff from the ceiling, even for hook slaws and springs. I love these little magnetic hooks. This lab works best when the angle is less than 15 degrees, so students can use a piece of tape or some pencil to make a mark. If they're changing the angle, the students should use small angles like 5, 10, 15 degrees. When timing the pendulum, it works best when you release the pendulum and not just time one period, which is back and forth, but when the students time, let's say, five or ten periods, and then to find the time for one period, just divide by how many periods they had. When students are changing the length, it's best to start long and then work your way up to a shorter length. When changing the mass, slotted masses are great, but students can just use heavier objects if they're at home. To get students designing their own experiment, I have them use sticky notes. So in the center of this page is a sticky note with what we're going to eventually call our dependent variable, what we're testing against. So in this case, it's the period of the pendulum. Around it, I'm going to add factors that affect, or at least I think could affect, the period of a pendulum. So here are some ideas that students might brainstorm affect the period of a pendulum. The period becomes our dependent variable. I'm just going to move it over to another page. And then we have all of these other factors that might affect the period of a pendulum. I'll choose length as an example. We can only change one of these at a time. When writing a question, we can just use this independent variable and the dependent variable already listed here. So for example, How does length affect the period of a pendulum? And every good question ends with a question mark. Now these remaining variables need to be kept controlled during the experiment, so I'll move them all over. Now I've got my question and I have a list of controlled variables. When students are organizing these, they'll probably recognize that amplitude and angle really mean the same thing here. And if we're keeping the mass controlled, we can also control the material by keeping the same pendulum bob attached. How would we keep the acceleration due to gravity equal? Well, let's not go to another planet and then students would brainstorm how to keep the amplitude slash the angle equal. So pulling back the same amount each time.
You're not falling asleep, are you? After students have gone through and determined that it's just the length of the pendulum that affects its period, students can then design a clock that keeps time for 60 seconds. The way that I do this is I have one student pull back the pendulum and then start counting 60 cycles while another student is timing on a stopwatch. When the student who is counting up to 60 says stop, so will the student with the stopwatch, and we'll see how accurate they are. So yes, the pendulum experiment is pretty simple, and I know why you're really here. It's for the pendulum painting. This is such a fun and cool activity that I love doing with my students. I've done this with students in eighth grade all the way up to grade 12. Now, depending on the age of your students, you'll want to adapt this. It is really easy to adapt. I mean, I've done this with my four and six year old sons. So for lower grade levels, you know, you could just have fun with it or you can go as far as to find the patterns in it. At the higher end, you can go as far as getting into the equations for the X and Y values of the, the motion in this and the Lisa Du patterns. So it's a pretty versatile experiment. For my grade 12 senior physics students, what I like to do with them is have them identify the patterns in the period and what the ratios are. And from there, we go and we plot out the Lisa Du patterns. In a shorter year, what I like to do is have them choose a pattern that they'd like to create, and then I'll have them calculate how long to make the X and Y lengths of the pendulum to match the X and Y periods to achieve that ratio. Now we're ready to get into pendulum painting. For this, we already know the rules about the relationship between the length of a pendulum and its period. But for pendulum painting and creating least to do patterns, what's really fun is to have a pendulum with two different periods. This is pretty easy to set up. Right now, I've got a pendulum that's connected at two points to this bar, and it has a period in one direction. I'm gonna call that the Y direction. In order to create a pendulum with two periods, what I can do in a really simple way is connect these two strings with a piece of tape and then I'll have a pendulum front to back, my Y direction, and side to side. The easiest Lisa Du pattern is one with a one to two ratio. That means in the time it takes for one swing back and forth, there are two swings side to side. I've set up the calculation. Now this is already in the resource that you're going to get, but I've set it up here. The ratio of the periods is equal to the square root of the ratio of the lengths. So rearranging this equation, we can find here that if I had a total length of 21 inches, that I would need to make the bottom part 5.25 inches in order to achieve this ratio of periods. And that should get us our first Lisa Ju pattern. So what will a two to one pattern look like where the lengths aren't two to one, but the periods are? What that means is that in the time it takes for this pendulum to swing once back and forth, it's going to swing twice side to side. So this looks like this graph over here. In the time it takes to go once back and forth, we're going to complete two of those side to side. So it's going to go to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. So what this looks like might be a little bit counterintuitive because the pendulum is not moving at the same speed throughout the entire motion. It's moving fastest when it's going through the middle. So at the start, what's going to happen is if we pull it off to the side, it's going to travel quickly through the middle and then slowly, as it gets to that first two, or really half of the first period for the Y direction. 
So it's done one complete period, to and fro, side to side. Now, as the pendulum is moving back, the X direction completes another period, and it goes fast through the center. So it's going to come around here, quickly through the center, and then slowly back this way. So not the most beautiful drawing, but it looks like a figure eight or an infinity symbol. Let's see this one in action. Before I get pouring, I want to tell you about some of the features of the pendulum. I'm using a paper cup at home, but I use plastic at school. I wanted to try paper just to see if I could make this um, project even more sustainable. Um, what I found in my practice trials is that the cup tends to heal itself. So if you use paper cups, you'll have to go in after every few pours to make the hole bigger as the hole tends to swell and then heal itself. I've also attached some found materials, in this case just some dead batteries, to make the cup heavier to keep it more stabilized. And then when I'm mixing the paint, um, I have paint at school that's just uh, like a pump paint. It's an acrylic, but it tends to flow better. I just bought regular acrylic paint here from the dollar store, and I tend to have to mix about one part of paint to two parts of water. And give that a really good mix. You want it really runny. So it's tough to get that consistency from the get-go, but once you've got it, you'll know it when you see it. So I'm going to pour this into my cup. Now you can use tape on the bottom, you can put your finger at the bottom, or you can have another cup under that to catch any rogue paint that's coming out. I'm going to try this one and hope for the best. So I'm just using my finger. And this hopefully will look like a two to one Lisa Du pattern. It was not. My paint was too runny, as I suspected, but I didn't do anything about it. So one way to approach making the patterns with your students is to have different stations set up for each of the different ratios. So what I did the first time that I was uh, experimenting with this with my students is I set up all of the ratios in advance using the spreadsheet that you'll get and I calculated and I cut all of the pendulums to length. And then I had the students go through and instead of cups, they had masses. And then the students would calculate the period in the X and Y directions and then find the ratio. And then we replaced the masses with the cups full of paint. And then they could actually see the um, Lisa Du patterns created. Now that was a lot of work for me to do, to calculate everything, cut everything, set everything up, have them figure out the ratios and then have them paint. That was a lot of work. So what you can do is spread this out over a couple of days, have the students first figure out the relationship between the length and the period of a pendulum, and then have them cut and calculate the pendula to length. Um, that is effective. I've done that with my students before too. It does take more time, but then they have more uh, initiative in that. So that's really nice. Another thing that you can do, if you want to do this quickly, a good approximation, but it's not perfect for figuring out those lengths, is after you calculate them, what you can do here is just move that tape up and down to the different positions. Now I say it's a pretty good approximation because what happens is as you shift that up and down, your Y length is actually shorter than it was before. So it's not perfect, but you will get some pretty cool patterns.
Here you can see the loose edge pattern forming and how in the center you get more of a damp harmonic motion pattern. This lab can get really messy. When I had the grade eights in my classroom, I had the hooks on the ceiling and I allowed the cups to go down to the floor. They also weren't my students, they were just visiting. So it was ridiculously messy and I had to get out the mop. But this year, it was actually crazy clean. We used some reusable drop cloths or just some recycled paper underneath where we're painting and I remind the students to only pull the cup back as far as the edge of the paper and that keeps things really well. This year actually we had very minimal waste, just some string and some tape and everything else was washed and ready to be used for next time. Every file that you need to implement pendulum painting with your class is located in the virtual swag bag. So find my page and then that will send you to a drive of all of the resources I've included. I've got the spreadsheet for calculations and the handouts for your students as well. So find my page in the virtual swag bag and that will take you to a drive. If you want to see more pendulum painting, check out my Instagram highlights. I've got examples and more instructions on how to set this all up. I'm at Mrs. Brasso's Binder on Instagram.